Oh, I just did a video test, uploaded it, and it was the same as the other last few videos I did before the Pocono one, where I, I still can't explain what happened there. Nothing changed. But, um, okay, ready to go here. Uh, we got a Bristol Dirt Race in the Dirt Late Model Cars, um, as is traditional for me. I, I do this. Oop. I made some changes. Staying in that light colored groove there. Just the qualifying run. I think I'll get about a 16 4. Oh, 16 1, yes! <sighs> I hit a 127 in practice. Um, wow. This is a fast field. But see, whatever they qualify at on the AI, they're going to run about a half a second slower. Like, the fast guy here, Caleb. Um, is probably going to be my competition, and Tony is always up there. So, essentially, when you're, you like, when you qualify, you know, the top five, you kind of know speed-wise right now, I'm going to be faster than Norton, Gomez, and everybody behind them going forward in the race, because they, they will be slower. Uh, Caleb and Stewart will, will be a little, a little tougher. But you can follow that. Okay, here we go. I don't need the preamble, preamble. Okay, so. They tend to wash up a lot. Passing on the inside is kind of a must. You don't wash up too. Okay, so right here. It always takes me a few laps to get up to speed. I'm not a sprint guy, I'm a you know a long run guy. How many laps do you have? 23, yeah, so 25 laps. Legitimately fast me. And that's fine. What's he work for? It? Oh. The last record here is a 16 0. And I have one here. A lot. So, see how it plays out. And yes, you dirt racers, I have it on times four. There's a zero there. As I was talking about to myself, <laughs> the only thing I don't like about this setup is the left front seems weak. It's the one that's the least, that's doing the least amount of work. And I feel that it makes my nose just a little bit too unstable in situations like this and I lose speed so I can't I can't really get by the guy like I would want to you know um, yeah obviously I'm doing it but it's not it's not easy kind of like I think it should be it, yeah, I gotta drive it a lot harder than I really want to I gotta get past these guys to gap them It'll be all about maintaining the lead. Oops. Okay, we got a second. It's 
probably just getting held up by those lap cars once he gets past them. So we're gonna get past these guys. See, they drift up in the turns, which works really good for me to get by them quick. You see, it's a little, a little ornery for me. I like a bit more control. It's not bad, it's still fast, but you know, 16.3 fast. But I feel like right in here, because I tightened it up a little bit to not have it over rotate too much, because that's where it was over rotating the most, in the center of the turn. But it, it tightened it up off a bit, and I had a loosened them up there a bit and then adjusted the wheel off which I kind of feel is like it, it helps but it, it's also not as good but my incidental stuff you know the oscillating is, is way down and I'm able to maintain my lead I just gotta hold on to the end here and not screw up big time As I was saying in that video, when you adjust the wedge um, at a track like this, you know, depending on your setup, sometimes you're adjusting the wedge into the turn, middle of the turn, and off the turn. If it's just the middle of the turn that you're concerned with, once you fix that, you might find that you're too tight in or too tight off, and then you got to go to the, the other adjustments we're not fitting. I made one adjustment uh, half a pound up on the uh, left front, but it's working good. See, it's still 99, so I could probably up it again, but it was so hard to pass them, and there's only six laps left. I'm not going to do that. When I get back in, the, you know, next time I race here, 14 and a half PSI will be uh, staring me in the face. Put another half in. See what it does. Remember, second gear is high gear here. Okay. I'll do it all over again. Maintain lead with no lap cars. Can he catch me? Can I hold on? Two laps to go. Right on me. Pulled out a tenth. Two tenths. Can we do it again? I'm like almost not off the gas at all. And there's my 15.9. That's a record. Whoop, almost wrecked. Because I was looking at the thing. How purdy it was. And we held on and did it. Awesome. It's another win that will go into uh, the Xfinity Cars coffers. We're doing really good there. Uh, let's see how this looked from the uh, from the broadcast cams. Once again, the, just the way they did this dirt series um, from the replays, the views, um, e even the way the tracks are represented. It, it's like they, they did it a step above the rest of the game. The rest of the game was like, okay, now we got to do the rest. And then as they move through it, you know, with the asphalt tracks and stuff, yeah, it's different.
you know, not that this is tremendous quality, but when you race this series compared to the uh, the NASCAR series on the game, both E4 and 5, there is an attention to detail in in this graphically that is a little off and kind of noticeable at most of the uh, most of the asphalt tracks. I mean, I, it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I grew up, you know, with my first computer couldn't really handle stuff until I got the forerunner of a graphics card called a, a math coprocessor chip and installed it. Um, it you couldn't you know you couldn't run with the stands on because it was too much for the uh, the game or the computer to handle with the physics of the game involved because of all the math calculations. You know. And it doesn't matter if math calculations are right or wrong. It, it's there's a ton of them. Um, in fact, the only the only games really that have more whole process a processor use are um, well. I guess now you get to, you know some of those you know, those really intense RPG games like my son plays Elder Ring. Catch them on Twitch. ACDC 115. Um, or, uh, flight simulators. Flight simulators, you know, I'm heavy into that too. Well, I, not at the moment, but for decades. Flight simulator is the first game I ever played on a, on a PC. Apple II, back in the 70s. Uh, Flight Simulator 1. <laughs> That's the game, though. Um, but, um, the... What they do now is they literally calculate every molecule of air around your plane and what it's doing. And they have a way to, so you, you know, you're flying in a world, it doesn't calculate every molecule all over the world, it generalizes, it has algorithms, which are compound um, formulas to figure that. And then when you enter a certain zone where things would affect your, your plane, then it just goes, and you're talking trillions of molecules of calculation, and to get the most realistic type of feel to it, and then of course, you know, you plug in the airplane, and how it handles, and how much power, and what you're doing to it, and I mean, it's super complex, and this, this kind of sport, whether it be NASCAR, or IndyCar, or Formula One, or sports cars, or dirt, or whatever, is the next step down. I mean, just those those dirt things, right? Okay, the dirt that's flying off the car, I'm sure it's not as complicated an algorithm as it could be, but somebody had to go and figure that out on how to make that look like that, and it looks very realistic, you know. Um, no, it's not like maybe it was, you know, real life, but it's close enough when you're, you know, dicing at 120 miles an hour. Um, and you hear, hear all those corresponding tinkles on the, the chassis, the little pings and whatnot and all that, and that's, man, that's, that goes with the, uh, the sound has to be coordinated with the, with the, uh, the graphics. That takes a lot, you know, to do. And again, this is the kind of, this series is, is a step up. Um, if they follow through on the quality, um, I'm sure there wouldn't wouldn't. Be, and you know, Heat Four was a better game than Heat Three, and, and Heat Three was a better game than Two and, and Evolution. Every game is better than Evolution, but um, uh, it, it's not as bad as you think it is. But I think essentially what we're looking at, and this was what a 2019 game. In 2019, this is a much better game than we gave it credit for. Now, five years later, we have, you know, lost. I mean, I played the uh, last year's F1. I have last year's F1 game. And it was, oh man, it, it is, it's beautiful. You have weather, you have, you know, and you can control this. It goes back to like what I started on, you know, in the mid 90s for NASCAR, real, you know, simulations with the wheel and stuff, and it, 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 it's beautiful, it really is, you know, 
um, getting that kind of realism to a NASCAR game um, would be awesome. But you got to think about it from the publishers and the game manufacturers' point of view. Who plays NASCAR? Games? A lot of kids. You know, I'm not a kid. I'm old. But you know, a lot of kids play NASCAR games, and they play it with a controller on their console. Well, console's limited. You know, it can only do so much. I know they, they boost it graphically or whatever, but essentially to get it to work on a console, you gotta dumb the game down. And this is this is a console game. And they you kinda have to make choices, right? So if you're gonna increase the gameplay, you gotta and decrease the graphics, you gotta know your audience. And the, most of the people that play these games on console play multiplayer, quick you know, not quick races, but multiplayer online. Um, not many people play the career mode. They play it a, a little bit, you know, but they basically get on with their buddies. We're killing it, you know, uh, in dirt here. Oop. And... You know, it's, you know, four lap races, eight lap races, 20 lap races. Uh, most of them are single digits from what I understand. And there's about 300,000 people out of like the 2 million that own these games that really, you know, are dedicated to getting on like every day, every other day. And that's what they do. So tracks don't need to look so good. If you're only on it for four laps at a time, I mean, you might be on it for six hours, you know, going, you know, running four lap races or 10 lap races or whatever. But that's, that's the majority of the people, you know, and then you have probably, I would say eight to 10% um, from the statistics I've seen in the past that are like, kind of like me. It's like, okay, that's great. But I'm also in a, you know, I, I run, I want to run a league with other guys every week and the quirks of the game online you might not find so it's not a big deal you're one track you don't like to go to another track but when you're spending you know um hundreds of laps at a track each week you know then then you get more critical of what you're experiencing you know it's like darlington i love darlington Donaldson is one of the worst rendered tracks in this game. It doesn't look bad. It, it is a little... It has some graphic issues to it. But it's got some of the worst glitches. Particularly out of turn two. And you can see them. You, you can see what it is. It's where they took the old tracks and they copy and pasted it with parts of new tracks. I don't know if they made them new or they just mishmashed like the straightaways to the turns. I, I don't know how the, exactly they did it but it, it's kind of very obvious um when you see it uh they did it to dover too did it to a lot a lot of tracks like that but most of the glitches on the other tracks are really like totally out of the groove and whatnot but you get um no oh, sonoma perfect example that carousel man you know i love that track configuration um but it's terrible that carousel is is a is a meat grinder. <laughs> if you enter it properly, um, there's a bump, and you hit the bump right, wrong, or whatever, and you're knocked sideways. And you know, it, it's it's like no matter what you do, you just got to be lucky. It's like rolling the dice. You know, if you're racing somebody, you're not thinking really of where you are, right? And then you go in side by side. He can hit it. And it knocked into you, and now you're off the track. And there are invisible walls there. You, you don't have the runoff that you think you do. And then, boom, you get tons of damage. Uh, I found another one at the entry to the carousel area. Uh, down the hill there when you make the sharp right-hander. Um, before the carousel. And the uh, curbing on the right-hand side, if you cut that too much, there's like an invisible wall there. And it just destroys three sides of your car, and you end up high centered. Yeah, that's beautiful. Invisible. <laughs> you know, so things like that could have been definitely been done better. 
and they didn't really fix most of them for Heat 5. Um, the biggest thing that they did was they, they fixed the, uh, uh, they fixed the AI a little bit for strategy, um, a little bit for driving, but mainly just at the, uh, at the, uh, draft tracks at Daytona and Talladega. The rest, I don't know, it's kind of like whatever they did there, they carried over on some tracks, it's just, they do stupid things, uh, since then, but, anyway, while we have what we have, we'll continue to race. So thank you for watching. Um, next race is, as you see, is going to be the trucks at Charlotte coming up. Um, Got to change the settings. I'll do that now. We'll do stages, quick qualify. Yep. Okay, so. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, ask questions, and we will see you next time.